when we are talking about globalization what does that mean basically um you know uh, when we have entered in a in an era where everything you know you we can uh, you know have an access to each and every uh, thing that is out there in the world because of the inter internet usage we have entered into a phase of globalization that means from all over the globe we have an access to anything because of the fast transport system because of the fast internet system because of the availability of things anywhere everywhere on in the globe on the globe so that means uh, we have now become a global citizen okay now economic liberalization how do we uh, you know take that term into globalization it's basically a very broad term globalization is also a very broad term and uh, liberalization has resulted in the globalization because earlier nations were divided and they had you know some constricted policies like no much uh, like uh, this, this these are the uh, like for uh, for production they always had a cap on it ki after this much you cannot produce because state had always controlled the industries the organizations they had more uh, you know controlling power and they had a hold on them all those railways pet, uh, uh, petroleum industries and other industries they were all under government okay now when they have uh, loosened this leash on them they had become liberal so what has happened because of li becoming liberal they said now you can produce as much as you want there will be less control you will not have to have lot of licenses you will not have lot of administrative hassles that you earlier were facing okay so when the remove control is removed uh, now the industries they know they can expand and expansion may now they have sky as the limit because there is no control so now they uh, they don't even uh, government they don't even have controls they put a control on export and import also they can have as much export they can have as much import that means now you are free you are free to trade with any countries your neighboring countries you because you and you have no cap on production also so when you are producing lot of commodities you want to sell it also you have to go out and reach out to different countries all over the globe okay so that is how these two terms are interconnected so liberalization came in the year 1991 when the indian government opened its door and they said there will be less control of the government uh, and you know industries can expand they can uh, you know go for export they can have lot of in, uh, uh, e even they can import lot of uh, you know uh, products and they can also import technology import outside uh, uh, you know uh, industries they are from which are not there which were not the part of indian uh, scenario they can also come and set up their industries here so what happened the doors were opened liberalization led to globalization okay this is this is what you mean by the term globalization okay to encourage the economic development this step was very important because during the 1991 what has happened india was on a verge of economic collapse because india was very very strict with its policy earlier policies in the sense uh, they there were so many license raj system like for anything you have to take license you for anything you there were there was no ease of business like if anybody wanted to do business they used to say oh, come on leave it because itna sab kuch karna padega ye yahan se license lo yahan se lo unke go to that pay people go and ask them there was so much of um what you can say uh administrative uh tenter hooks that they were stressed they never wanted to be there so they used to say it's better yaar yeah, to to do a small business and they never wanted to expand but once you know there is no control on you you are free to do 
and government is going to support you what you will do definitely everybody would like to span its wing and have a flight in the air sky is the limit then so this has happened after 1991 because government had opened its door they said okay go ahead and do it and isko hamesha aise bolte hain um government said ja simran ja jile apni zindagi so government at that point of time told all the indian industries and indian small businesses now you are free you are free to do business will make it easy for you we are not going to control you okay so this has basically happened in the year 1991 so liberalization actually uh, it led to more producers what happened jaisi liberalization hua so kya hua there were many producers that they came it led to more producers theek hai in the market they when this happened what happened production increases employment increases when employment increases prices uh, when there's lot of commodities prices they come down right prices they come down and when the prices come down more more of the people they are able to buy those products when more every uh, you know uh, commoner is able to buy certain products the what in what improves basically your standard of living improves because earlier those prices were very highly priced because there was less production now when those uh caps were lifted production raised prices came down people started buying those product because now they were a little cheaper so when they were able to buy their standard of living also improved okay but before liberalization since control was there only few producers were allowed and they fixed the price on a very high okay and then they used to take all the profit because they also wanted to take profit so always kept the price on very high so common people were not able to get the benefit production was less prices were high if you were few of people were able to buy those things so this had impacted the indian society um in a very very positive manner because employment also generated because when they producers were interested in uh, you know producing more stuff they definitely wanted to hire people more more people were given employment but what were some disadvantages so when more producers they come in there was always a cutthroat competition isn't it and sometime again this leads to reduce prices and when they in this war what happens um some of the industry some of the small businesses they are not able to survive they they fail to uh, you know compete with the big big giants so they um their efforts they go in waste and they have to shut down their businesses so these these are small some some of the disadvantages okay but some were able to keep up the pace with the uh, going trend liberalization was very favored at that time even now it is favored why because liberalization it benefits the consumers because consumer can get cheaper products and there are variety of products that are there now in the market variety of services that are there in the market you can choose from in during before 1991 there were less uh, you know less choice given to us there were very little choice given to us and globalization may when other uh, you know countries they started coming towards india we even started getting foreign products in our country at a price which was affordable so we got suddenly we you know doors were they were open earlier we always used to think that uh, some of those who had their relatives in uh, living in us or another other countries only they were having access to some good brands good quality stuff and good foreign products now everybody in our country you can go and get those products because all those people all those big big giants they have come to india to invest as per the process of globalization okay so this is an impact which uh, 
uh, has actually taken the whole Indian society with a wow factor. With everybody is because they had not seen such things before, so everybody uh, has uh, taken it very well in their stride because they were happy. They were happy because they were supposed. There was because of the competition. They were getting better products at lesser price, and not only better product, they were exposed to variety of international products also. Okay, so these are the plus points of liberalization, and you know, uh, there are certain countries which specialization specializes in certain products. So those countries also got the benefit. For example, Sri Lanka has has got. tea plantation bangladesh has got lot of good cotton fabrics okay so they also now opened up because they knew that india has opened its door for import and export as well so they also improved their uh, or increased their production in that field because now they they knew there is a market out there in the world who is going to buy their products so so the this globalization liberalization they impacted even smaller countries who were uh, good in one or two things only like for example sri lanka good for coffee and tea plantation bangladesh good for fabrics so they also took advantage of these things okay now but but there can be uh, there had been some uh, you know minus points also in this regard like for example um uh, they as i told you there were certain industries were not able to you know survive this cutthroat competition and they perished okay now liberalization um, also uh, had led to lot of pollution why because there had been because they now were on a spree to have more production so what they would do they will definitely set up more industries because there is now no control they want to really expand so when they uh, set up new industries pollution level there also increases okay and then there were another uh, environmental crisis that happened after uh, liberalization and globalization okay so we'll uh, we'll be dealing with all of these things uh, in the later part of the chapter now the removal of the trade barriers uh, often subjects the domestic economy in the effect of international event for example um uh, you know if there was an economic recession in one trading partner country uh, that can actually spiral into another's economy also so its impact is uh, seen in the other other country also so this was also one of the disadvantage of globalization earlier doors were shut so if one country is going through recession other countries were not uh, much affected but now since you are totally into each other's economy so the impact is seen in other countries also who are their partners in you know okay so um, basically and likewise you know i can also tell you that international competition had actually hit the local industries so much that now local people they uh, really you know have to struggle see just imagine if the mcdonalds were not there and uh, there was a vada pav stall on the highways definitely people would go to a local per- person now what happens in mcdonalds um when mcdonald outlets have opened all over the you know highways and other places this local uh, vada pav people they their businesses have reduced <clears throat> though to be very frank i would i definitely go to a vada pav because i know that uh, vada pav is freshly made by a local person and i owe it to my indian society i owe it to my indian fellow being who is working hard rather than a multinational who is giving you a stale stuff which is kept in the freezer for a long time and then when you go there they just you know put it in the microwave and there's so many things that are involved so if you have to consider my point of view i would definitely go to a local vendor and help his business grow rather than a mcdonald because i know 
uh, otherwise my country fellow will not be able to survive isn't it now uh, what are the different elements of liberalization theek okay? hai so major elements of liberalization in india are are uh, like delicensing of the industries so here in delicensing of the industries i'll be talking one second where is my pen ha huh. here we'll be talking about uh, in the year 1991 after the new industrial policy came into force uh, uh, you know many licenses for most of the industries were abolished so only there were few in the, uh, you know industries we still needed license and they were alcohol industries they were cigarette industries um they were industrial explosive and um, defense products and um, hazardous chemical chemicals hazardous chemicals okay and then drugs and pharmaceutical industries let me write it for you drugs now anybody can tell why the uh, license were not abolished for these any journal idea please while i'm writing the drugs and chemical anybody can tell me any wild guess see i told you in the year 1991 uh indian government abolished license for most of the industries but these six industries were not uh, their license were they still have to take a license before they want to set up or expand so my question is why these six industries were not in that list tell me any wild guesses just by looking at the uh, you know category alcohol cigarette industrial explosive defense products hazardous chemical and drug and pharmaceutical industries so the answer is why these six or seven industries were not uh, you know Uh, given the freedom of having no license was because government still wanted to control these sec- sectors because alcohol industries agar ho jayega and without license ho jayega you can uh, you can imagine what will happen lot of alcohol production will lead to the downfall of the indian society lot of cigarette production still again downfall of the indian society because people they don't control themselves so the government wanted to still have the control on all of these things theek hai then defense products there has to be a control of the government here industrial explosive you can know what will happen if you have lot of explosive production and without any control no license chemicals also hazardous chemical then that too drugs and pharmaceutical also so that's why government still kept these things under license so for any of these industries in case you want to set up you have to take license theek okay? hai so but major element was of liberalization was that most of the industries got de license that means there was no need of license is that clear now let me erase all of these marks from here now second element was private agencies were given freedom private agencies were given freedom means to make their own decisions regarding how much production they want to do how much consumption is there how much pricing marketing borrowing lending and investment so in all these fields production consumption okay then pricing mein in sub field mein they were given freedom then marketing kaise karni hai they were free one second where is my pen marketing 
एंड और क्या था लेंडिंग और इन्वेस्टमेंट बोरोइंग के साथ लेंडिंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑल्सो ठीक है लेंडिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट उनके ऊपर डिपेंड करता है दे वर फ्री नाउ इन सब एरियाज में प्राइवेट एजेंसीज वर गिवन फ्रीडम इन ऑल दीज एरियाज ठीक है दीज वर द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ दीज आर द टू एलिमेंट्स दैट आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट डी लाइसेंसिंग सेकेंड इज द प्राइवेट एजेंसीज दे वर गिवन फ्रीडम जस्ट गिव मी गिव मी सम टू मिनट्स I just want to uh, uh, take the laptop charger because this battery is going running down, and let me put the charger. Otherwise, you know the class will get disconnected. Give me two minutes, huh? Let me get my laptop charger, huh? Thank you so much for having that patience. Uh, I'll start my lecture now again. Um, yeah, I was talking about private agencies were given freedom in the field of production, how much they wanted to produce uh, according to the consumption, pricing, marketing, lending, and investment. Okay. Now the third element for uh, of the liberalization was opening up doors for foreign investment. as i told you before also like uh, the in, according to the industrial policies uh, 1991 uh, there was a list of high investment and high technology priority industries for which automatic approval was provided for foreign direct investment okay now at present the fdi which is called foreign direct investment is allowed up to 100% in the area such as hotel industries tourism and exports or even infrastructure all right so now the fourth element of uh i'll have to erase this here one second yeah so fourth element is liberal taxation norm so after that tax structure was also changed so that everybody is free you know to the corporate taxes were reduced by 30% jab bhi corporate taxes zyada nahi hoenge then only they will be interested otherwise kya hoga fayda 
दे कैन इंक्रीज देयर प्रोडक्शन बट उतना ही उनको टैक्स भी देना पड़ेगा सो वाई वुड दे वर्क एक्स्ट्रा हार्ड ओनली दे विल वर्क हार्ड एंड इंक्रीज द प्रोडक्शन एंड गो फॉर लिबरलाइजेशन वंस देयर टैक्स स्ट्रक्चर इज ऑल्सो रिड्यूज एंड दे ऑल्सो गेट मोर बेनिफिट इज इंट इट सो द कॉरपोरेट टैक्सेज टैक्स रेट्स वर ऑल्सो रिड्यूस्ड टू थर्टी परसेंट विच इज द करेंट फॉर द इंडियन फॉर्म्स एंड फोर्टी परसेंट फॉर द फॉरन फॉर्म्स टू ऑपरेट इन इंडिया थर्टी परसेंट हमारे इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए एंड फोर्टी परसेंट यहाँ पर मैं फोर्टी परसेंट लिखने वाली थी फॉर द फॉरन फॉर्म्स विच आर हैविंग देयर ऑपरेशन इन इंडिया ओके अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू इरेज ऑल दीज इंक मार्क्स वॉट इज द फिफ्थ एलिमेंट ऑफ लिबरलाइजेशन लाइक ग्रेटर फ्रीडम वॉज गिवेन टू द पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट ग्रेटर फ्रीडम इज गिवेन टू द पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट इन डिसीजन मेकिंग लग इन अर्लियर यू नो वॉट हैपन एटीन से आई टॉक टॉक अबाउट दिस गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्चुअली इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नवरत्न नवरत्न मीन्स वेर इन एटीन पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट पी एस यूज उसमें भेल सेल गेल ओ एन जी सी ओ एन जी सी हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम एंड बी पी कोल इंडिया ये सब आ जाते थे ठीक है वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड देवर फ्यू मोर ओके दे वर गिवन द स्टेटस ऑफ नव रत्न नाइन जेम्स ऑफ द पब्लिक सेक्टर इंडस्ट्रीज सो दीज पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट्स वर गिवन फ्रीडम टू हैव देयर ओन डिसीजन्स विदाउट एनी गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन आई एल राइट इट फॉर यू सो कौन कौन से थे इसमें यहाँ पर मैं लिख देती हूँ पेन हैज टू गो दिस साइड ओके इसमें था भेल सेल गेल हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम ओ एन जी सी और कौन सा था कोल इंडिया हाँ कोल इंडिया था इसमें एक और कोल इंडिया ठीक है ये सारे थे सो दीज पी एस यूज वर गिवेन फ्रीडम टू टेक देयर ओन डिसीजन विदाउट एनी गवर्नमेंट इंटरफेरेंस और इंटरवेंशन नाउ वॉट वॉज द सिक्स एलिमेंट ऑफ लिबरलाइजेशन फ्रीडम टू बिजनेस बाय रिमूविंग अननेसेसरी इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटीज ओके सो दैट मीन्स यू नो जो लाइसेंसिंग एंड कोटा सिस्टम था वो बॉलिश कर दिया और राइट ना ऑटोमेटिक परमिशन वॉज गिवन फॉर फॉरन टेक्नोलॉजी इम्पोर्ट इन प्रायोरिटी इंडस्ट्रीज कितना अप टू टू मिलियन यू एस डॉलर ठीक है ना नो परमिशन वॉज रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल फॉर हायरिंग फॉरन टेक्नीशियन एंड फॉरन टेस्टिंग ऑफ द नेटिव टेक्नोलॉजी इसमें फायदा क्या हुआ नॉट ओनली यू गेट द फॉरन टेक्नोलॉजी बट ऑल्सो दे दोज पीपल दे आर इंटरेस्टेड टू कम टू इंडिया टू सपोर्ट अदरवाइज देर वॉज लॉट ऑफ हैसल्स फॉर देम एंड दे वो दे वॉन्टेड टू गेट इन टू दैट बिकॉज वाई वुड एनी बडी हेल्प यू वन दे हैव टू फेस सो मच ऑफ ऑबस्टैकल्स इन दे वे सो नाउ दोज थिंग्स वर रिमूवड ओके ओके Permission was given freely, and uh, no permission was actually required for them from the government officials. Okay. Now, what was the seventh and the last element of no prior permission is required from central government to locate industries. That means that means they can um, uh, you know set up their industries anywhere in India. Except you know in cities where are with a lot of population is there, so they would not want that pollution to get into the you know system. So that is why they tell uh, in case you want to set up your uh, industries, it should be either in the outskirts of the cities or in some areas where there is less population which gets affected by the pollution. Otherwise, they were free uh, to locate their industries anywhere in India. and there is no permission required from the central government for doing that okay political industries were uh, they were supposed to be located around 25 kilometers from 
the city so that it does not pollute the environment of the city okay now i just wanted to know how much time is still there uh, okay so we still have time so we can take up the other uh, uh, next topic also uh, now what are the advantages of liberalization and on the side we'll also talk about what are the disadvantages आपने पूरा सुना वॉट इज ग्लोबलाइजेशन वॉट इज लिबरलाइजेशन सो यू मस्ट हैव कम इन योर माइंड दैट देर हैड बीन सो मेनी एडवांटेजेस दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू एज अ बुलेट पॉइंट अर्लियर ऑल्सो ना अगेन आई एम राइटिंग इट फॉर यू इट हैज रिजल्टेड इन द स्टिफ कॉम्पिटिशन एंड वेन एवर देर इज अ कॉम्पिटिशन द क्वालिटी इंक्रीजेज एंड द कंज्यूमर्स दे बेसिकली बेनिफिट ओके सो देर हैज बीन एन इंक्रीज इन द फॉरन कोलेबरेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द लिबरलाइजेशन ठीक है थर्ड बुलेट पॉइंट इज दैट फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज नाउ अंडर कंट्रोल एक्चुअली लिबरलाइजेशन हैज हेल्प्ड इन सॉल्विंग द फिजिकल बर्डन ऑफ इट स्टेट वेर लॉस मेकिंग पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट्स वर प्राइवेटाइज 1991 में वी वर ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ यू नो सेलिंग आर कंट्रीज गोल्ड यू नो गोल्ड शेयर होता है ना जो कंट्री का वी वर ऑन दैट वर्ज ऑफ you know just uh, getting lost but because of this physical deficit le- uh, deficit came under control and since public sector undertakings were given uh, freedom so they were given more uh, you know decision making power in uh, and they also got privatized so whenever there is a privatization you will see there is a remarkable shift because uh, most of the con- uh, industries who are under government the the um, attitude of the government employees are not uh, you know uh, not um, uh, what you say uh, they they not proportional to the amount of you know work because they have to get that much salary only and they are aware that after uh, this government job will be over they will be given pension also there is no uh, motivation but once the uh, industry or something becomes a private industries then they know that the more they work the higher they will go up and uh, uh, there is a uh, there's a scope of improvement so when something becomes private uh, the private companies take the onus of you know making them uh, uh, making the employees uh, uh, run on their toes okay they will ne- never let their employees to just sit and uh, you know uh, have their pension at the end of the retirement okay so government sector mein mostly yahi hota hai bolte hai na government ka babu hai usko kya farak padta hai wo 9 to 5 ki job karega and after that he is going to get the pension but once you are in the private sector you will have to work you are not a babu government babu nahi ho aap आपको कुछ भी अगर एक्स्ट्रा करना कमाना है फॉर दैट यू विल हैव टू वर्क सो दैट इज वाई देर दिस शिफ्ट वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ फिफ्थ बुलेट फोर्थ बुलेट पॉइंट इज दैट इंडियन कस्टमर्स नाउ दे स्टार्टेड गेटिंग गुड्स ऑफ बेटर क्वालिटी एट अ चीपर रेट राइट नाउ वॉट आर द नेक्स्ट वन देन देर इज वन मोर पॉइंट दैट आई लेफ्ट हियर एंड दैट इज आई कैन एट हियर ओके Uh, liberalization has helped in improving global improve the global trade relation okay with other countries now disadvantage due to opening of the economy there has not been an increase in the employment opportunities it is contrary to the fact that it, uh, which was propose that because of the liberalization employment will be generated but to somehow it has not got generated to the extent that it was expected to be okay now second point is the inequality of income between the haves and the haves not have increased that means um the, the, jaisa socha tha na ki the poor people they will uh, got, they'll get the benefit but it has actually not happened poor people are still not able to afford only the middle class people have been able to uh, uh, become better okay now third point is indian consumer mindset is that 
so conditioned that foreign goods are better in quality now even if the foreign industries they are set up but once they see the make in india or made in india tag they still feel that if they get the products which are actually made in foreign countries they will be better indian mindset aisa hai even i feel sometimes this way because uh, there are certain uh, foreign uh, setups that have come up here in our countries but to be very frank there is a ye setup mindset up wrong nahi hai aisa to be very frank hai bhi in many many products you can see once you buy those products from the us market and uh, if those products are similar products are uh, you know present here and manufactured in india they there is a there is a difference in quality no doubt okay now there are, there was one or two more points here now inflation has become a continuous and a serious problem this is one of the disadvantage which i have not written uh, here you can write inflation has become a problem because of the liberalization and then there is one more point which we can add here um there is a fear of money laundering uh, because of the various schemes which are introduced by the government to attract foreign exchanges in india money laundry ka problem aa gaya hai isme because you know there are many people who acts like babus or middlemen so they in a way to get the work done they take money from uh, both the sides because uh, because they know they, they they will do the work also but then there is a issue of money laundering that has crept in because of liberalization theek hai uh okay now what is uh what is privatization um privatization basically means uh those public sectors or no those government sectors uh were uh, which were owned by the states will become private that means they will be selling those government sectors to the private uh sectors for example in just lately you must have heard the news of uh, tata uh, buying the indian airlines uh, in air india earlier also air india belonged to tata only because tatas were the first to bring uh, aircrafts to india okay so if you remember the story of uh, nosherwan tata uh, what's his name uh, ratan tata is right now jamshed ji tata so he was the one who actually brought uh, um, air india so this was taken up by the indian uh, after independence it was taken over by the government so now again it has bought back it has again become now private so you will see a remarkable difference now air india ka employees ka jo attitude tha na you must have seen uh they uh, jo air hostess also you will also come to know ki jo air hostess thi they were um, they never used to treat the pa- passengers very nicely whereas in if you go for all those private air uh, airlines like jet airways uh, spice jet or any other roof, any other so they had a different attitude but air indian uh, airlines ke jo air hostess thi they they were on a government job so they never bother they never take care of the passenger in a way they should be doing so now you will see air india again becoming uh, a private organization uh, going back to tatas now you will see there will be a remarkable change in the service of this okay so basically uh, private is privatization means it means selling state owned assets to a private company theek hai it refers to the process where in there is reduced involvement of the state or the public sector in the economic activities so uh, and so that uh, the role of the private sector increases theek okay? hai uh, privatization basically started happening in the year 1980s let me change the color of the pen because here the background is blue so i need to take something which is lighter okay here so privatization basically happened uh, in the year 1980s se lekar 1990 kahan pe sab shuru hua tha it happened in britain okay 
in that decade there were so many uh, uh you know what has happened basically uh many sto- state owned industries like british petroleum british airways british telecom uh, brit electricity company electricity wale and then gas companies they all were which were previously owned by the state they became they were privatized and there was a remarkable change in the their growth if you see the graph there was a remarkable change so looking at this britain model in 1991 india also went for this privatization they started doing it because you know they knew it ki when they want to really grow they will have to give uh, control to a private sector theek hai otherwise government employees ka jo ek attitude ban jata hai na kaam karne ke liye so they are not work oriented they are only money oriented they want to take bribe they want to not do any work so because they know they are now government employees they will get benefit even after uh, you know retirement also so <clears throat> uh so these were the so in india 1991 mein it the concept of privatization gained importance theek hai and this is called the po- reform period it is called the reform period so because look uh, looking at the model of britain because uh, what happened there there was as i told you there was a remarkable you know growth in the in the, all of these sectors i show you the figure here uh, this was a uh, british petroleum okay so once it was privatized it suddenly started you know showing the good results then this was uh, examples uh, uk example of positive effect इसका मैंने इंटरनेट से ये लिया है सो ब्रिटिश टेलीकॉम प्राइवेटाइज इन नाइनटीन एट्टी एट सो इंडस्ट्री केयरफुली सिलेक्टेड एज प्लेंटी ऑफ डिमांड एंड कॉम्पिटिशन इम्प्लीमेंटेड थ्रू मर्करी इलेक्ट्रिक फॉर्म विच वॉज इंस्टॉल्ड बाई गवर्नमेंट एंड डन सो नो मोनोपोलिस्ट अफेयर क्रिएटेड नो ब्रिटिश टेलीकॉम चार्ज हायर लाइन रेंटल सो कॉल चार्जेस कुड बी चीपर ठीक है ये सब जब इनका हुआ और ऊपर से ये वाला देखो British Airways ka you see the graph how it was declining and suddenly after 1987 it became private suddenly the graph rose you can see here see this was the downfall like this downfall so here the ni- year 1987 and when it was privatized you see how it skyrocketed here so looking at this model when five of the britain companies they they re, uh, improved remarkably so indian government also thought that it will slowly and slowly start privatizing the government sectors okay now let me know what is the time because i have another class okay so i'll have to wind up now because i have another class in another college so we'll be doing uh, the next part in the next lecture okay <laughs> so all of you have a wonderful day enjoy and be safe because uh, don't go out because the virus is still on the you know <laughs> on that spree you have to take care all right all of you bye bye have a good day bye ma'am bye bye